Hi. Uh, I'm not sure if, if it's uh, clear enough and uh, if the sound is okay. Uh, having some problem with the angle of the camera. So let me know, Mariela, if sound is okay, the images are okay. I having some problem with the camera angle, so so hopefully it's it's uh, okay. Is sound okay? The images are okay. Okay. So everything is fine. Happy to hear that. Okay, so I wanted to start. Uh, this is a, a continue uh, part of the pith instruction uh, on, on a personal reflection on Dzogchen teachings and uh, which is not really um, not so much different from what we have been talking about the five wisdoms so I think in some sense they all are connected to each other in the end the essence of the teachings is always they're all connected to each other I think they are, always, they are usually very simple, very direct, very personal, and they are connected to each other. Sometimes we, as human beings, we just like the complicated part of the everything, um, even including the teachings so of our nature. So the title of this uh, talk today is When Things Change, releasing the pain of grasping. I think uh, this is a, a good topic in, in a way. Um, it really kind of tells the everything that today's society and also in our life, how, what thing, how things are goes on. So there's a two word here, a very important word here. So the whole title is when things change releasing the pain of grasping. So in this title, there's a two very important word. One is a change, one is a grasping. So why change and grasping produces so much pain in our life? Why change and grasping produces so much pain in our life? So let's kind of closely reflect that uh, in our own life, um, all of you, you can look look at in your own life, as a larger uh, society, your family, your personal life, uh, all the uh, threats, challenges, difficulties, pain that you are feeling, facing. Um, look at the two things, change and grasping. Because you cannot really experience any challenge or any threat, any pain, uh, unless two word, these two words are involved, change and grasping, and particularly grasping. Because in Buddhism, generally we say, that dangzing wangi dungal da chepa khurwi chenyi. So, dangzing wangi dungal da chepa khurwi chenyi. So, the definition of samsara is the one who possess discomfort, suffering, pain as a result of grasping. So, every pain, every suffering is simply a product of grasping. So that is what it is here. Grasping, this word, word grasping. In Tibetan, we say zimpa, basically, literally, 
grasping mind. It is, Zimpa is the grasping mind. But of course, when we say Zimpa, what do you grasp? You can, as last time I was talking about grasping phenomenal, appearances, experiences, possessions in life, titles, status, which is very much outside ourselves, which we grasp. And when more we grasp, the more pain or confusion or, or even uh, blockages of flow or even obstacles of success in what we're trying to do in our life happens because how strong we grasp them. Internally, we grasp ourselves, a sense of I, sense of who we are, which then I will talk later. So basically, basically I want everybody to reflect on these two words, change and grasping. Okay, how many of you are feeling some kind of um, challenge, pain, discomfort, fear in your life this moment? How many of you? Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for your feedback, so I'm happy to hear your feedback. How many of you? You don't have to go into the details, but you can say whatever you wanted to say. And uh, now if you look at closely the situation in your life that you feel challenge, threat, difficult, pain, confusion. If you look at closely to the situation, there's a two things, change and grasping. So what it, what it is for you, at least what, what do you see it is for you this moment? I want feedback also. Is it a change that you are having difficult to handle? Or it is a grasping or unable to accept process? The change is that problem. So is it a change itself or is it a grasping on the change or is it a both? Okay, now for example, what kind of changes we can think of, we can think about, you know, feeling uh, separation, for example, a sense of separating uh, from something, from somebody, loved one, close one, change. Separation, divorce, losing job, or, f or fearing losing job, a fear of unfamiliar situation, places, people, changes in a life. Or aging, definitely aging is a change. We always get surprised. You feel young, you feel like a you feel like a young in your 20s and 30s or maybe, I don't know, feel, you even feel younger energetically, psychologically, your perception, perception of yourself, but then somebody calls you, I don't know, old person or something like that. Or in India, which is where I am right now, where people call uncles, dad, or they're, they're not, you're not their dad, but they call you something like that. They just, they don't mean bad, but they just say something like, make you think, oh, I have changed. You're trying to belong to a younger category, younger group of people, but they, they feel they, they laugh at you. That those are changes. Aging. Of, of, or you can no, no longer walk in the same way. You cannot climb no longer in the same way. You can no longer run. 
You can no longer get up in the same speed, same effortless. Or you fear of death, or you hear dying people so frequently. You hear all the time somebody's dying, somebody's dead. These are changes. These are natural changes. But why these changes produce us suffering, pain? Because we don't want them to change. So there's a two things. I think in the Tibetan, particularly in Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhism, there is this two important thing. One, it's called impermanence. Or in a conventional sense, conventional sense, everything, every matter is impermanent. But every appearances are lack of inherent existence. They are they, they, they do not exist in their own inherently. They are imputed, labeled received by us. So there's a kind of two important, important part of when we talk about uh, change and grasping. One is like a dying, aging, death, sickness. These all are nature of impermanence. It's a very natural process that we see, we witness, we feel, but still we are not willing to accept these changes. We want you to stay younger, healthier, we don't want you to die. These are the changes we have difficult to accept. Of course, of course you can try to live healthier life, be more aware of your food, get more exercise, rest more, practice more, be more kind, be more gentle, be socially more active, connected, help people, engage with people. All those things are for sure is a wonderful part of your well-being, practice of longevity. But some point, no matter what you do, we have to accept that moment comes to all of us. So that is a change, change in a grasping mind that I'm talking about. Let's, let's go a little bit more on a personal level. If you think about these two kinds of changes, one, impermanence, one, it's more deeper issue of identity, of self-identity, who you are. These are really like the pr primarily causes of our suffering and pain when grasping mind of self-identity. So for, for example, who you are and who they are for you. Think about that. So for now, I, I want to have a moment of uh, reflecting on your life. Who you are? Who am I? And, and who they are for me? So basically, you yourself becomes also a causes of your own suffering and pain when it's related to uh, self-grasping, grasping mind, self-grasping identity, and others, all appearances, particularly other people, they also becomes a, a source of your suffering and your pain depends on how you grasp them, because who are there, who are there, they, who they are for you. So who they are for you. So let's think about that a little bit. How much of these, um, 
what I'm trying to talk here is a little bit more like a recognizing this idea of, um, you know, idea of letting go of grasping mind, which is the sources of our suffering and pain. Grasping mind in a sense of two, one in very natural sense of impermanence, one is more imputed sense of self-identity, grasping of who you are, who others are for you, where these two places where many of these confusion, conflicts, sufferings are produced. So, so look at some of the things, what's happening in your life this moment. So all the challenges, all the pain and all the sufferings that you feel, how much you feel it's you're producing by yourself and how much you feel somebody is causing to you that. And can you recognize in both cases are, are, are there is a change involved or are there is a for sure sense of grasping mind is involved? So I want everybody to kind of reflect that. For example, identifying as a father, identifying yourself as a mother, identifying yourself as a brother, sister, husband and wife status, position in the status, and even habit. Something we say, I like something. I like to have a, a milk in my coffee. I would like to have a black coffee. I like to have only one spoon of sugar. I like this. I don't like that. A habit that we get, we, we, we dis we have some kind of habit, some some preferences, some some preferences we have, and we label ourselves, I am the one who likes this, not that. And with, with a, a deep sense of um, confidence, some certainty, uh, some sense of being really stuck in that habit, rather than saying, I like it, but it doesn't have to be that. I like it, black coffee, a little milk is okay. I like coffee, but tea is fine. I like water is fine. There's some sense of um, really getting stuck in what you think, what you like, or what you think, what you don't like. Who is the one in the, in the first place who decided you like that or you don't like that? You. So if you made yourself like something or you don't like something, you can change that also. The flexibility is, is what we're trying to achieve. Not having too clear idea about good and bad. Duality. That, 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 that's the nature of human being. We always put so much effort and energy trying to separate what is good and what is bad. And we lose all our energy our resources in this ideology of what is right, what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. Rather than we can change some of our opinion of what is good and what is bad. So anyway, let's not get into more theoretical. Let's try to talk a little bit more on a personal level. So let's look at a little bit more on you, in your life, in, your, in yourself, how strongly you identify with something. I, I always give one example, you know, usually when I, I'm traveling and somebody picking me up at the airport and I, I like to be picked up, you know, people who are, whoever is coming, I like them to be in time. And also, if they wanted to come, then I like to be in there on time. I can, I don't need to be picked up, but, but then I realize one day somebody did not pick me up in the time, I, get, I realized getting agitated about it. Then I, 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 th I look at myself, why am I agitated about somebody came late to pick me up? Of course, I have a rational reason. I've been traveling 20 hours, over 20 hours, exhausted, tired. Somebody is just coming from half an hour away 
could have come in time. All those logic, but those logics are not good logic. The main re main point what I find out is I some point in the past I decided that I don't like it. But that was one idea, one I one moment I had, but that could be changed. Then at that very moment when I realized that, and I said, Well, it's okay, somebody can come late. It's okay, somebody does not show up at all. Why not? So what I'm saying here is the habit sometimes we get also, we say I like something, don't like something, and we get really get stuck in that idea who you have just created yourself. So, so there are many sense of grasping mind, identity that you create in yourself, it becomes the causes of your suffering. But then you can also look at what, who they are for you. Or, I cannot believe my husband did that. I cannot believe my wife did that. I cannot believe my sister did that. My brother did that. So, there's some sense of who they are for you, what they did to you, it's too much. So, why, why we suffer? Because somebody did something or somebody said something or somebody yeah so basically why why it's a problem because also if you look at it closely we expect them to be kind because they are your relatives your parents your children that identity of role label, it's what you're grasping that moment. If they are not your husband or wife or brother or sister or parents, they could have done the same thing, you, you would have not been bothered as much. Now you can see your identity and your their, them, what they are for you, this two identity is causing these suffering or, or challenge or conflict. And it's okay to identify them. Your, your child, your, if it's your child, you say, it's my child. But you don't have to expect one way of being. There are many ways of being. And the best way of being is having a lot of space that others can be who they are, giving some space and freedom to them to be who they are. And you can only do that when you are being more who you are rather than what you identify with. Or at least not grasp as much. This is the whole idea of, you know, releasing the pain of grasping grasping in the moment of changes. So the changes are happening and it will happen regardless, but you are having difficulties with those changes. So anyway, so these are two things I think mainly what I'm trying to say, who you are and who they are for you. So if you look at it closely, that part, two part, and so you are, whatever you identify with yourself, and the, when changes are happening to that, you suffer. Whatever you identify with them, and what, when they do something, say something, and you have a difficult to accept that because how you identify them, that's also a grasping mind. So either self-grasping, or grasping in a certain, a certain uh, relationship of others. So these are like uh, uh, some aspect to, I think it would be nice to re uh, reflect on. And then the other thing is, I think you know, one thing, one mantra that we of very often recite is we say, maybe how many of you are saying somebody did something 
or I cannot believe somebody did something that to me. I cannot believe somebody said something to me. How many of you are saying that or feeling that this moment in your life? So if, you, if you're feeling, I cannot believe somebody said that to me, or I cannot believe somebody did that to me, and um, just think about for a moment, why do you think that way? Why do you think they should not do that? Because, because maybe you're a special person. Because maybe there are some special person for you. Maybe you have a specific relationship that they should not do that. Because it has something to do with a position, status, relationship. expectations but think about if that expectations were not there if that relationship was not there if it's not about a status who it's more important who goes first who does first thing and these all are some sense it's related to identity how you identify yourself or how you identify them for you if, if for a moment if you can think beyond that then you will feel free because this is what it is in every society even in the tibetans not even not maybe even in tibetan but in particularly in tibetan you know there's a lot of hierarchy who sits on the right side who sits on the left side who has a higher throne Who wears what? And all those, all those ideas are maybe in some time is it maybe useful, necessary, but when, when they become a problem, a conflict, when they become a place where we get stuck in, where they become where we fight and argue, lose peace, connection between each other. Then you realize these are the things that we really have to overcome. These are the things that we really have to let go. Little things like in the family, who calls first? How many of you are waiting for to be called or to, to be written, to be text? to be approached by your family, friends, relative. Because last time you wrote them, you said hi to them. This is this time it's their turn. You are waiting, but you haven't heard from them. Every minute, every hour, every day seems very long. They haven't written me whole day. I've been waiting for their text. Do you really think they are ignoring or do you really think you are rushed? Maybe they are, maybe they did not even receive the text. Maybe they are busy. Maybe they don't have good internet connection. Maybe they are not well. But no matter what they are going through, for you, it's about you. It's they are not, they don't like me, they don't respect me. 
they don't acknowledge me. So you can see how much is translated into oneself. It's about me. But sometimes maybe you recognize, oh, well, I do that. It's, it's really true. I do that. I need to calm down. I need to relax a little bit more. I need to breathe. I need to take a break. But sometimes we don't even able to reflect on, on, on that. A little bit of awareness, there's no. It's simply you really feel it, they, are, they, are not, they are not kind, they don't like you. So this is, this is what it is, you know, how we translate everything within us, around us, outside us. It's always everything is about you. That is why we say self-grasping, dangzi, denzi, grasping mind, and anything happens to that grasping mind, any changes happening to that grasping mind, what that grasping mind identity is used to, it suffers. So the whole idea of being free or freedom, it's, it's trying to really be free from that. So just to conclude, maybe a little bit here, I think um, if you look at, as a main title, when things change, all the changes are happening in your life, and you have a difficult to accept, recognize, realize, utilize, benefit from, awaken from, so much possibility. The worst one is to suffer, the best one is to be awakened. And between, there's so many options and possibilities. Where do you stand? So choosing this sense of, this choosing with your own inner power, inner awareness, inner recognition, that wanting to let go of grasping. Not circumstances, situation, other people forcing you, but you are realizing it to let it go. Many teachers, masters who have achieved realization, that's what they did. They fully recognize the change, changings, accepting, transforming them, utilizing them, benefiting from them, growing through them, and, and achieving uh, some sense of liberation through, through that change. Change becomes greatest mean to change in, 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 the, in terms of the liberation for them. Change is not suffering producer, changes the door to that through which they are able to realize when they do not grasp it either grasping self or grasping other with a specific identity 
what they are used to, what they have created. The little things sometimes becomes the big things. So I hope this makes a little sense. Okay, so we, maybe we can uh, sit for a moment, silent. I'll sing the... I don't have the... able to play the Salivya Mantra. Don't have my computer. So... We'll just sing the A uh, Om Hum and just feel, bring more sense of awareness in your body, in, in the stillness, more awareness in the silence, speech, more awareness in the, your mind, spaciousness, openness. Just for a moment, be fully aware of your body and the stillness in your body. Fully aware of this presence of silence, awakened silence, luminous silence, joyful silence. Be fully aware of the sense of connectedness to the Cyber Sangha. No matter where you are, what condition you are in, what time zone, what place you are in, we are this moment, we are all connected. And this connection supports each one of us from each other. I send my support to all of you and I'm open to receive your support this moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So until next time, be well, all the blessings. <laughs>